Okay, our slope formula we call m is our slope, and the formula is the change in y over the change in x. So I like to write my ordered pairs on top of one another, vertically, like that. And I look at my y values, and my slope is going to be y2 minus y1. If I start with y2 in the numerator, I have to start with x2 in the numerator. I mean in the denominator, so sorry, in the denominator. So I have to start with x2 in the denominator so that these two values are the ones that correspond to one another and these two values are the ones that correspond together. Okay, so there's your, your blue and your red. So we're going to find the slope through the two points, negative 2, 1, and 5, 7. So the first thing I do is write the ordered pairs vertically. Write the ordered pairs vertically. So we've got negative 2, 1, and 5, 7. Then we're going to choose which y value you want to start with. Which y value to start with. I'm going to start with 1 because I know you've used this slope formula before. So our slope is equal to y minus y, x minus x. So I put my two subtraction signs there and then I'm starting with 1 in the numerator. Okay, so we're starting with this 1 in the numerator. That means we need to start with negative 2 in the denominator. And then we're going to Take 1 minus 7, so 1 minus 7 over negative 2 minus 5. So we started with this yellow ordered pair, y in the numerator. Okay, 1 minus 7 goes in the numerator, negative 2 minus 5 goes in the denominator. And what did we end up with? negative 6 over negative 7. And a negative over a negative is a positive. And that's exactly why I just did what I did, so that I can show you that when you have a negative over a negative, it does become a positive. Now let's say that someone was working ahead, which they shouldn't have been, but let's just say someone was working ahead and they said, hey, wait a second, I started with 7. So if you start with 7 and you do 7 minus 1, then you would do 5 minus negative 2. And that is also 6 over 7, which is the same of, as 6 over 7, which is what we found. The biggest takeaway here is that I write the ordered pairs vertically, so let me show you. I'm going to do this next try, and then you can do this, this B on your own. So I rewrite the second ordered pair, 4 comma 7. And then I say, do I want to do 7 minus 5 or 5 minus 7? So now that I see the x's and the y's and that I have to do y minus y, I say, well, which one do I want to do first, 7 or 5? I want to do 7 minus 5. Then in the denominator, since I started with 7 in the numerator, I have to start with 4 in the denominator. So then I'd have 4 minus 2. So 2 over 2 is 1. So this is a great example of a slope that is still a fraction. It's the slope, and you can still make it a fraction. So when we use it later on, you can always make it 1 over 1. But we reduce for our final answer to be just 1. Okay, you go ahead and try this next one. And then come back and check your work. Make sure you have the same work that I have written down. Okay, if you're back, the first thing I hope that you did was rewrite the ordered pairs vertically. And then perhaps you said 4 minus negative 2. 4 minus negative 2 in the numerator, 
since I started with four in the numerator, I have to start with negative one in the denominator, negative one minus three. So that gives us six over negative four, which is negative three over two. We always move the, numer the negative to the numerator. So this negative right here moves up to the numerator. You never leave your negative in the denominator. So when you're writing your negative fractions out, always move that negative up to the numerator. Okay, now let's take a look at this graph right here. What would I do for this graph? Well, you can try and do your graphically, but I wouldn't do it graphically. They're giving us ordered pairs, so I would write down the ordered pairs. One, two, four, two. So my slope is equal to two minus two over four minus one. That's zero over three and the slope zero over three reduces to zero. Please don't put your slope as zero over some number. Zero over any number other than itself is equal to zero. So this is your answer, zero. Okay, our next one, this is a vertical line. So my ordered pairs, four, two, four, negative one, that makes sense because vertical lines, all the x's are going to be the same. No matter where you are on this line, your x is always going to be 4. So my slope is equal to 2 minus negative 1 over 4 minus 4. And that's going to be 3 over 0. Dividing by 0 is undefined. Therefore, your slope is undefined. You learned that a long time ago. Dividing by zero is undefined. And I think the part that maybe hangs up students the most is a fraction being a division problem. So your numerator is being divided by your denominator. So when you divide by zero, this says three divided by zero. That right there is undefined. You can't divide by zero. Can't do it. So once once your mathematical portion is undefined, your slope is undefined. So now that we know that horizontal lines, well with horizontal lines the y values will always be the same therefore your slope is zero and vertical lines your x values will always be the same, therefore your slope is undefined. What is the slope for this one right here? What is our slope? Do we even have to do a calculation? Well, no, we don't. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero. So sometimes I will write that as the special slope it is, Z-E-R-O, the slope is zero. And what is the slope of a vertical line? There's no reason to do a calculation when you have a vertical line. The slope is undefined. And that is because your x values will always be the same. And when you're dividing by x minus x and you're taking anything away from itself, you're going to be dividing by 0. And that's what's going to make your slope undefined. So here's a little summary for us. A line with positive slope slants upward from left to right. A line that slants downward from left to right has a negative slope. All horizontal lines have a slope of zero. And all vertical lines have a slope that is undefined. Those four things are crucial for you to know moving forward. Okay, all of those things are crucial for you to know moving forward. But between these two videos, you should have plenty to go on for your first assignment that is dealing with